Now, Brazil has recorded over 4,000 COVID-19 deaths in 24 hours. That's its worst day since the start of the pandemic. Its death toll overall is now past 330,000. And the situation is pressing, with thousands of patients struggling to access health care. Have a listen to this ICU doctor in the town of Porto Alegre in the south of Brazil. We have been working at full capacity for quite some time right now. Um, what we are seeing is that it has been a long time since we have attended patients with anything other than COVID uh, in intensive care units. Uh, and everyone is exhausted right now. Um, we are exhausted because we haven't seen our families for such a long time. Uh, for instance, I haven't seen my, my relatives for the past 15 months. Um, also, we are not hopeful that anything can change in the following weeks. We are vaccinating at a very slow pace right now. Next, I want to show you this graph, which shows the death toll. In March alone, over 66,000 people died. That was double the previous monthly record. And that has put pressure on not just the healthcare system, but on cemeteries too. This one in Sao Paulo is continuing burials through the night. Also in Sao Paulo, is this doctor. We are having uh, difficulties in getting people trained enough to manage critically ill patients. Uh, exactly one year that I made the first autopsy of COVID-19 in our hospital and uh, identifying the, the nature of the, the disease. Uh, and uh, I was, at that time, I, I, I didn't imagine the, the impact and the extent that the disease will uh, uh, reach in Brazil. And because of this rare and bizarre combination of bad policies, also the social vulnerability of the population, because some, some uh, levels of population cannot afford to do so social isolation, and also uh, by the emergence of a new variant. Well, the variant he's talking about is called P1. It's more commonly known as the Brazilian variant, and it's thought to be twice as transmissible as the original strain of COVID-19. It was first detected in Manaus in the Amazon in November, and within two months, it was accounting for 73% of cases in the city. Now, though, it's spread far beyond the Amazon. It's driving a surge in infections across South America, in Peru, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, Venezuela, and in Argentina. Here's Dr. Paolo Salvida again on why this strain is different. This new variant, we have our, uh, we have cases at the younger age. So now uh, people under 14 are uh, in parallel in the same uh, extent affected by uh, as compared with older people. So we are having more young people they're suffering and even children dying because of a lack of assistance. The system is in the edge of a collapse. So there are pressing concerns now, but there are also concerns this variant could have impacts for months. One doctor who coordinated the pandemic response in the northeast of Brazil is warning we may get to 500,000 deaths by the 1st of July. That's the latest estimate. So that would mean an additional 170,000 deaths in the next three months. 170,000. And bear in mind that while some countries like France have brought in lockdowns to deal with new variants, Brazil is currently easing restrictions. Here's just one example. This picture is from Sao Paulo on Tuesday. As you can see, this train station is packed. And here's one epidemiologist on why Brazil's approach is causing problems. The difference between the P1 variant here and the others is that the P1 variant is circulating pretty much freely here in Brazil. So we are not adopting the lockdown measures needed. Uh, many people are not using masks. So the variant is facing a very friendly field to go disseminate and infect people. This is what concerns me the most. And if that's the variant, another factor is Brazil's vaccine rollout. It started in January. Currently around 8% of the population has received at least one dose. This man is responsible for the rollout, Marcelo Queiroga, he's Brazil's health minister. He's the fourth person to do that job since the pandemic began. He's also a doctor, which some people are finding reassuring. Here's Dr. Pedro Halal again. The new minister, he's trying to do things based on science. Uh, 
his main uh, enemy is the president himself. So realistically, uh, the, the new minister is trying to do the things right. We have accelerated the vaccination. So our goal needs to be 1.5 million doses per day. And we are actually getting to 1 million per, per day, which is actually good because our previous average was around, around 300,000 per day. And this minister admits the possibility of doing lockdowns, which is something that the president doesn't admit. Now, we have heard from a lot of people already, but we need to talk about the man in the middle of the story, the man uh, who's just been referred to, Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro. He's played down the severity of the virus. He's defended unproven drugs as treatment. He's raised doubts about vaccines and has resisted national lockdowns. And as you've heard, he has many critics. One of them is the governor of Rio Grande. What we are facing here in Brazil, what we have here, it is a sad situation that is the consequence of the lack of coordination in the federal level by the national government that we have here. It is President Bolsonaro uh, confronting governors and mayors uh, in the main tool that we have, the main weapon that we have to not allow the coronavirus to spread uh, in an easy way and the weapon is the social distancing. His behavior is unfortunately killing Brazilians and it is hurting our economy. So we've talked about the variant and the vaccine rollout and the president. We should also say there's a tension between messages coming from the president and his government and messages coming from state level governments. Have a listen to a cardiologist in Sao Paulo on this. The, the problem is that every day we watch uh, someone of the president team and your sons giving contradict contradictory uh, information to the population. Uh, this is a political scenario of polarization, keeps uh, people away from the, uh, the reality. Uh, it's common to see people think that the number of deaths uh, is not so high uh, or seeking ineffective treatment supported by these statements. We hope that the new minister uh, can change it. It's also worth noting Brazil's president has shifted his tone on immunizations recently, pledging to make 2021 the year of vaccinations. However, his position on a national lockdown remains the same. Last week, he said, we're not going to fix this problem by staying at home. No nation can sustain itself for long with that kind of policy. Well, for further analysis on the point Brazil's reached, here's the BBC South America reporter Daniel Gallus. Specialists in Brazil, health experts, don't really know whether, you know, the absence of lockdown may have contributed to this worsening of the crisis. Could it also have been that Brazilians are more relaxed throughout the summer? They're not uh, adopting social distances, uh, distancing uh, practices. All of that we have seen. But, of course, the Manaus variant is more deadly. It's, it's spreading more, uh, more easily. And it also may not be as resistant to the vaccine, although vaccines are proven to uh, tackle the Manaus variant and of course this is a threat to the world as well because as we've seen these variants it's almost impossible to contain them in one country and they can uh, spread across borders even if travel is banned from 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 countries